walking to the front of the park from the parking lot, you are greeted with the amazing view of great B&M coasters like Intimidator, Fury 325. So you get a magnificent view right off the bat. Great skyline, absolutely beautiful. You start to approach the entrance, and of course, you walk over and under Fury 325, and you get some awesome views of that ride. There's lots of opportunities for awesome videos and pictures here, so uh, that's really cool how they have the entrance done up. Kind of like how you go into Cedar Point and you have Gatekeeper to greet you at the front entrance. This is that times 10, and it, it's absolutely phenomenal. You go through the security they do a very efficient job here, just like they did at King's Dominion at Cedar Point. Very efficient, very quick. Um, they let you know right off the bat what you need to do to help them out and to get through there quickly. Very well done. You enter the park, and you have this small midway with, like, Starbucks and some other eateries and, like, other merchandise shops and things like that. Great way to enter. And then you have Nighthawk at the very front of the park. Very nice looking ride, I gotta say. Very nice looking for the front. You go off to the right, and you kind of go down this small path, and then you eventually get to Vortex, their stand-up coaster. Then they have a little carousel park that looks really nice. Lots of trees and greenery. Beyond this, you walk a little farther. You have their Wild Mouse Coaster, Ricochet. You have the Carolina Cyclone, a classic aerodynamics looping coaster. And then you walk to the right, and you have the plaza. This is the old Paramount Action Zone area. There is an Entenmann Drop Tower there's the Hurler Wooden Coaster. There's a Jukebox Diner. And then, of course, right beside the Hurler, you have the much newer Fury 325. Absolutely phenomenal, huge giga coaster. So, overall, I think that area of the park, that old Action Zone area, that really needs a lot of work. At King's Dominion, they gave that old Action Zone a really nice renovation when they added Twisted Timbers last year. And I think this area could definitely use some sprucing up as well. It's just kind of like dead when you get all the way back there by the drop tower and the hurler entrance. It's just really kind of deserted feeling back there. And I think they will do something with that area eventually. Of course, the section right around Fury 325 looks absolutely great. It's a fairly new ride, and it's their most popular ride, so everything around there looks great. Very vibrant. Some nice sign work and everything that Cedar Fair has been doing lately. So, going back the other way... You go past Carolina Cyclone, and you walk by the Carolina Gold Rusher, which is their mine train coaster. Then you have some nice, like, sit-down restaurants and stuff around there that look pretty nice. Then you go into the county fair section, which is really nicely done. Once again, everything looks great. They do have some more carnival fair-style type rides, like their Electro Spin, which I rode. And that was actually really fun. Really fun, unique flat ride. I had a good time on that. They have the uh, old Boomerang from Geauga Lake, which they named Flying Cobras. Not a good ride, but it does have some nice theming around it. They made it look really good. A few other small flat rides, you know, that you'd find in like a fair or carnival. And then you walk into the brand new section, Blue Ridge Junction. And wow, does this area look great. They did a really good job with this area. Of course, Copperhead Strike is the new big thing for 2019. And that's an absolutely phenomenal coaster. A mock double launch coaster. Great ride. I'll be doing reviews on all the major coasters in the future, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. But Cedar Fair absolutely knocked it out of the park with the theming around this ride and just the whole experience and the actual ride itself. I mean, everything is great. For Cedar Fair, this is really good theming. Going beyond Blue Ridge Junction, you kind of veer off to the right, and you have another kind of dead section over here. At least when I was there, there was like nobody over there really. They, the days I was there, for some reason, they had a sign that said limited attractions available. I'm not really sure why that was. Um, a guest was talking about some theories he had why it might have been, but uh, I'm not really sure why, but a lot of rides were closed at several points when I was there. Some of the flat rides. The uh, theater, like, interactive type experience thing that they have over there, that was closed. And they just have, like, some games and stuff. And it was dead. So you walk up further past that area. They have Afterburn, the B&M Inverted Coaster. And because of the area that this ride situated in, there was never a line for it. It was always a walk-on. They were just running one train on it the second day I was there. And 
you still don't really have to wait for it. There was like nobody in the station. Absolutely phenomenal ride. I love how it uses the trenches and everything. Obviously, this is the old Top Gun ride. It looks really nice. I mean, the area is great. And then if you go beyond this area, you sort of hit their like Planet Snoopy and Peanuts area. And wow, does this Snoopy area look great looks really fun they have a lot of great kids rides they have their woodstock express which i find those to be really fun they have their wilderness run steel kitty coaster they have these absolutely beautifully landscaped areas like they just have this one area that has all kinds of gardens and everything and these wooden chairs that like you know the parents can sit in while the kids are running around and riding stuff or whatever so it's really nicely done with like fountains and lots of greenery it looks really beautiful if you go past this section you can sort of go around to dinosaurs alive and then you cross a bridge and you get over and towards the front of the park again and you have Kitty Hawk, which used to be called Flying Ace Aerial Chase, which is their Vacoma Junior Inverted Coaster. It looks nice. I did not have a good ride experience on it. I can see why they're called Hanging Bangs, but it's nicely done as far as presentation goes. And then, of course, you walk a little ways beyond that and you have Intimidator, their B&M Hyper Coaster. So overall, this park is very beautiful. Not nearly as much in terms of like trees and shading as King's Dominion has. But overall, this is a very beautiful park. The layout is pretty good for the most part, but I did have some trouble finding things like around the area of like Windseeker and Boo Blasters and Afterburns. The way some of those paths connect kind of threw me off a little bit and I struggled to find some things, but overall the layout's pretty good. The operations at Carowinds are great, and I really got to give the crew on Fury 325 a shout out here. They were busting their butts to get those trains out. The whole time I was there, I was seeing 30, 45 second dispatches on Fury 325. I mean, it was great. Running two trains, wow, absolutely phenomenal. It blew me away. Overall, my experience was really nice, and I'm definitely looking forward to getting out to Carowinds again at some point in the future. And uh, I absolutely recommend it. If you're thinking about traveling out to go to Carowinds, it's absolutely worth it. One thing about the coaster lineup specifically is they have four really great coasters and a couple after that that are all right, pretty rewritable. A lot of the coasters at Carowinds are just one and done type rides. Just ride them once to get the experience. So overall, Carowinds does a great job with their operations. They have some absolutely fantastic rides and coasters. The atmosphere is great. The park's very clean. Just a very, very nice park. One more thing real quick. I would suggest not wasting your money on a fast pass here as well. It's just not necessary, I don't think. I'm sure there are some really busy days at Carowinds. It was pretty busy when I was there, and the lines were moving great, and there were barely really any lines for the most part. Even on Fury 325, there was never really much of a line. A lot of times it was walk-ons, so definitely keep that in mind when you're going. I don't think a fast pass is necessary here if you're spending the whole day at Carowinds. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to follow me on my social medias. I'm on